The guy that my mom was staying with at the time was exploring the half dug out, mostly stone basement. You'd open the door and it would be this narrow opening to these rickety stairs. Just inside the doorway on either side of the wall were two very rough, obviously handmade wooden crosses. They were set up parallel to each other, like a bit of a barrier. When I say rough and handmade, I mean made by two pieces of very old wood held together in a cross shape by an old rusty nail. Naturally, this man thought they were cool and immediately removed them from the doorway to hang on his wall. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. Today I have more of your own terrifying tales to read with you today, so cozy up and let's get some spooky stories going. Story number one. Hey Morgan, boy do I have some scary stories for you. I've always been super sensitive to paranormal stuff, have been ever since I was a little kid. The first instance of spooky stuff happening when I was around five to six. Every night I would see a fox face shadow figure outside of my window. Mind you, I am on the top floor of a three story house. In high school, my best friend lived with me and an entity followed her that was named Fred. I've always known Fred as being the hat man. Along with Fred, I would always see a little girl who couldn't have been more than five. She took up residence in my mom's room, which was directly across the hall from mine, so I'd see her often. Since moving in with my boyfriend, I've had even more scary instances. Including, but not limited to, the entity that hangs out outside his dad's bedroom and follows me around the kitchen, making stuff move and rattling windows. I've had something crawling on top of my roof of the car, hanging out in the back seat, and generally just following me around our property. The scariest instance had to be when I woke up in the middle of the night, 3.33 a.m. to be exact, watching multiple tiny figures swarming around the foot of my bed with the sound of an old-timey military band in the background. So all of those stories are scary, but that last one caught my attention because what is that? Have you guys ever heard of that happening? Like anytime I hear tiny creatures, I'm like, oh, fairies. But I don't know why military music would be playing with fairies. So have you guys ever heard of that? Story number two. I live in the eastern part of Tennessee and have a story. So this was back when I was only 10 and I lived in almost the middle of nowhere. I invited my friends over for a sleepover that night and when they arrived, something started feeling off. I didn't think anything of it and went inside to play with my friend, but she really wanted to go outside. So that's what we did. It was around 8.40 and I decided to mess with her and tell her a scary story. I told her this. One time when I went out at night, I saw something weird in the woods. It crawled up to me and got so close it could have bit me. That never happened, but I wanted to scare her. A few minutes later, around 9 o'clock, I hear something rustling in the woods by my house. I thought it was a deer, coyote, or a bear, so I went back inside, but as I was closing the door, the woods went silent. The next day, I went outside to tell my friend goodbye, and as she got in the car with her mom, she drove away. I felt that weird feeling again, but this time I thought I was being watched. I went back inside and started scrolling on my phone when I thought I heard my friend whispering my name, but she just went home. I got up and looked outside and all I could see was my neighbor's cat staring at me, so I went back inside. I have no windows in my room, but all night I felt like I was being watched, so I didn't get much sleep. The next morning when I woke up, I felt normal, as if nothing happened, and I never saw, heard, or felt anything since then. Ooh, sounds a little bit like you manifested something not so great. Story number three. I'm not sure exactly what to title this, but this story is going to take you for a very long ride, as I feel it is important that you know the background along with the state and the town I live in, as a lot of negative historic background lurks here. I live in Rolla, Missouri, and have since I was around seven. At 14, we moved into a house right behind a cemetery. I love this cemetery very much, along with the human and a select few non-human invites. I would go into the cemetery all the time as a way to decompress, as it usually had a nice vibe. I do that too. That was until around August of 2020 or 2021. Dates are a bit hazy. I made friends with a few Wiccans and started to get into witchcraft and such. One of the people I was friends with decided that after I dropped them to do a spell. It of course went wrong because they had no idea what they were messing with and chose to do it in the cemetery after dark. This spell backfired so hard it created a three-story high portal in the back of the cemetery where non-human entities generally stayed. Whatever came through that portal was hell-bent on taking me. I wish I still had the photos where we caught over 40 entities in one photo standing in my backyard watching. Three of us were only three feet away, so once we realized it, we and the ex-friend headed inside pretty quickly. Once he had entered the house and moved away from the windows, they proceeded to tell me that as we were walking up the hill to the front yard, one of those things started mimicking my voice. 
Another small note, I had a bunk bed and turned it into a fort type thing, along with the fact that I had a basement bedroom and a singular ground level window that was quite small right at the foot of my bed. Two nights after this happened, I was on the phone with the same person who had done the spell and heard my voice mimicked. It was around 2.40 a.m. We weren't talking about anything important or weird as we were about to hang up. A silence fell over the phone for a moment and I heard three faint taps on my window. It progressed quickly to the point that whatever these things were ripped the screen off of the living room windows trying to break into the house. Three days after I astral projected and felt an entity climb next to me in my bed, as well as something trying to walk through the door. I was pulled back by something, not exactly sure what, and fell onto the bed and woke up to find nothing there and more knocking on the wall right above my head. We moved six months after this happened, but when I go back to that house on occasion, I can still feel them in the trees. I know the story's wild, I promise it happened, and it was horrifying to say the least. I didn't think at 14 I'd have to deal with this type of stuff, but here we are. That's terrifying. Yeah, I, um, that was either a spell gone wrong or that's exactly what they were trying to do, which is also scary. Story number four. I was born and raised in Washington State in a little urban town with my house being surrounded by the woods. I'd always felt really safe in my house having lived in a gated community, thinking nothing would ever happen. We always left our windows open, lights on, curtains open, and never locked our doors. I'd always been the only person in my house to believe in the paranormal, so naturally I always tried to avoid the windows at night and had my own set of rules. I would turn my room lights out at midnight. If I had a bad feeling before in the day, I would turn it out at dusk. Close my curtains at sundown. If I go downstairs at night, keep my head down and avoid the windows. These were always my rules that I followed, but one night in winter, when both my brothers were away at college and my sister was spending the night with her friend, my dad had also been working a night shift at the hospital 40 minutes away from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. I was home alone. I'd always had insomnia and could never fall asleep before 2 in the morning. This night it was especially bad and I found myself playing on my iPad at 3.30 in the morning. I got hungry and decided to go downstairs and grab a bag of chips. I brought my iPad with me downstairs as to not break a streak on the game I was playing. Having my iPad with me, I had totally forgotten about my set of rules, when all of a sudden, I had the sudden urge to look up and out the kitchen window into the forest. And I did it. When I looked up out of my window, all I saw was a black humanoid figure no less than seven to eight feet tall. He had glowing red eyes and was staring back at me. The thing about this figure that was truly terrifying was how human it looked. It looked like your shadow would during midday, human but more elongated. All of its limbs were too long, more than yours, not long to the point it was over-exaggerated. It was also just like a shadow, almost transparent. But when I had looked up at it, we locked eyes. There was nothing I could do but run. I couldn't think and ran up to my room as fast as I could. I locked the door in my window and made sure my curtains were closed before climbing into my bed and hiding under the covers. Something I should mention is that my room was on the second floor. Outside my window was a little slant of roof, very steep and only about three feet long. It had also been raining that day, so the roof should have been very slippery, but as I was hiding under my covers, all I could hear was tapping on the glass of my window. Something was out there whispering hay as well. I could hear it climbing around on my roof, trying to find a way in. It continued like this for about 30 minutes until I just fell asleep out of fear, I can only assume. I was woken up about an hour later to my dad shaking me because... His words, not mine. When I came upstairs to check on you, I found you under the covers, shaking and crying, grasping onto your mom's childhood stuffed animal that she had given before she became sick and passed away. Ever since then, I've always had experiences at night, such as tapping on glass and footsteps on the roof. I've seen it peeking around trees every once in a while, but it's never done anything major. But that's my story, and I just thought it would be cool to send it in. Sorry, I know it's a bit long, but let me know what you think. Also, I forgot to mention that this was my first ever paranormal experience. Since this story has taken place, I've been experiencing paranormal things pretty frequently. Some of the things I experienced are tapping on my window, hearing my name being called, footsteps on the ceiling, and seeing things in tree lines. Little side note, this is not my only experience with this thing. My most recent one was about a week ago when I was in my bathroom comforting my cat during a huge windstorm. The next thing I knew, the power went out, so I took my phone out and turned on the phone flashlight and continued petting my cat until I noticed my cat staring at our skylight. Me being my dumb self, I looked up to see what it was. The entity was there again. I managed to play it off as to having not seen it, and that was that. Also, I mentioned that the shadow figure was black, but I've come to the conclusion that it was only black because it was so dark. Anytime I see it now, it is a whitish gray. So yeah, that was just some more details. I hope you enjoy my stories with this thing. With the updated way that they said it looks, that's definitely one of the things that lurks in the woods. If that was not already apparent by all of the experiences, yeah, that's terrifying. All right, let's read our final story. 
When I was a kid, I grew up in a house that I would describe as ridiculously haunted. It was in West Virginia. Say no more. That house was definitely haunted. It was in West Virginia, so random hauntings weren't particularly unusual. Least of all in my family. For a bit of background, this house was very old, drafty, three stories with an unfinished basement. Or maybe two stories with a basement and an attic. Both were unfinished now that I think about it. When we moved in, we were renting. The guy that my mom was staying with at the time was exploring the half dug out, mostly stone basement. You'd open the door and it would be this narrow opening to these rickety stairs. Just inside the doorway on either side of the wall were two very rough, obviously handmade wooden crosses. They were set up parallel to each other, like a bit of a barrier. When I say rough and handmade, I mean made by two pieces of very old wood held together in a cross shape by an old rusty nail. Naturally, this man thought they were cool and immediately removed them from the doorway to hang on his wall. <laughs> For the most part, we coexisted with the ghost. None of us were really bothered by them much, so eventually everything calmed down. Mostly. There were a couple of noteworthy exceptions, but nothing too extreme. The only time I ever felt truly unnerved in that house was when I was about 14 or 15. I came down in the middle of the night to get some SpaghettiOs. They were off-brand and delicious. My room was upstairs. The stairs led down to the dining room, which was a big open space between the living room and the kitchen. You could stare straight from the kitchen into the living room easily. I was standing by the microwave waiting for my bowl to heat up when I looked out into the living room. For some odd reason, I stopped looking at the microwave's countdown and looked to that living room. Standing in the middle of that room was the classic dark figure. They reached almost to the ceiling. My mind decided they were wearing some kind of cloak or perhaps a veil over a dress. Either way, too dark for me to make out any details. I couldn't even make out any eyes, but I could still tell they were staring at me. The reason I gave so much backstory to this is to try to explain how this being made me feel. I've seen a lot of things, mostly glimpses out of the corner of my eyes, sometimes right in front of me for a split second. Never for this long, never this clearly, and I've never genuinely been afraid. This being made me afraid. I was afraid because I could feel with every fiber of my being that this being did not belong there. The other ghosts in the house felt like they were a part of the house, but this being shouldn't have been here. Unfortunately, while I was looking at it, I said, you don't belong here. It just slipped out. My tone wasn't angry. It was more confused. A touch alarmed. I kind of said it under my breath. Probably a mistake. I also felt with every fiber of my being that while it didn't want to hurt me, it would. It's hard to explain, but it felt like if I did the wrong thing, that would be it for me. It was a bit like it was regarding me like a bug, maybe. It didn't care about me one way or the other, but if I annoyed it or caused it trouble, then it would simply get rid of me. Something also told me not to look away, which is counter to everything I knew, but I also knew better than to ignore my own intuition with these kinds of things. I stared at what I assumed were its eyes. I almost feel like they were following me when I started walking. I said out loud, I'm just making a snack, while continuing to stare at it. I tried not to outwardly show any hostilities or fear, and I didn't leave without my food. The microwave beeped and I took my food out without looking away from the being. I put my spoon in the bowl and walked a little weirdly towards the stairs so I could keep looking at it. I then went up the stairs to my room, locked my door, and had my SpaghettiOs. Typically, I know I shouldn't talk to them. I shouldn't look. I shouldn't really acknowledge. However, everything I did felt like the right thing to do for whatever that being was. Or maybe not the right thing, but the best thing I could do with the circumstances. I never saw it again. A bit of an uneventful story. No, it was not. <laughs> but still one of the only things that shook me to my core. I can't really ever forget that feeling or knowing that being didn't belong there. Any encounter I had, I'd never felt that way. Looking back, it was probably because I never encountered something that didn't belong where I encountered it. Everything was always in its place. This was different. Wrong even. So to be honest, I mean, when it comes to like negative entities, um, sometimes it is best to talk to them and tell them that they don't belong there and to leave. There's just some things you can't really acknowledge, but I, I don't think that was one of them. Anyways, that is all for the stories today. I hope you guys enjoyed them and I will see you guys next week.